Vice President Dr. Mama Dubamia on Monday announced government will no longer be procuring electricity generated from the relatively more expensive thermal plants. Instead, it will be turning to renewable sources such as solar. He also announced government will henceforth not pay more than 10 cents per kilowatt hour of electricity purchased from the independent power producers who want to do business in the country. These were amongst initiatives in the energy sector highlighted by the Vice President as achievements in the first 100 days of the Kufado led administration, a joint news town hall meeting. One of the areas where there is a lot of opaqueness is in the allocation of oil blocks in Ghana. We, we really don't know who really owns these oil blocks. We are saying that let's bring in transparency in the allocation of oil blocks. And the Nana Kufuado has put together a team of experts to work with the Co Petroleum Commission to develop regulations for the transparent allocation of petroleum blocks as provided by Act 919. We are also going to reintroduce a new policy and we've announced that it will take effect on, uh, on July 1st because people have to have time to adjust. The new policy on the sulfur content um, in our petroleum products. Effective 1st July, the sulfur content in our fuel will be reduced from 3,000 PMMs to 50 PMM. PMM. This will reduce respiratory diseases triggered by fuel toxins with high sulfur content. And so we are moving um, to be at the same level by, say, the Western countries or the East African countries in this regard. For new PPAs, the new policy in the energy sector, that says from now on, all, because Ghana is moving towards renewable energy, we are no longer going to accept any thermal power purchase agreements. It's over. From now going, if you are bringing in a power purchase agreement, it has to be renewable energy. He explained government's review of existing power purchase agreements has saved the country $300 million. We have saved the country $300 million by reviewing and prioritizing the existing power purchasing agreement. The $300 million, we've essentially canceled about 20 of them. We've asked uh, four of them to go ahead and the rest to delay by two or three years. And in so doing, we have managed to reduce government's liabilities. We've also secured financing for two major electrification projects, the Hunan and China Water projects. And this, when implemented, will extend electricity to over 800 communities. The Vice President listed a total of 103 achievements he says have been accomplished in the first 100 days of the administration, including the strengthening of the local currency. He added that rather than adding to the country's debts, as claimed by the opposition National Democratic Congress, the recent CD bond sold simply goes to ease the burden of the debts. As you know, the public debt ended at 122 billion Ghana CDs in 2016. And so we, as a matter of strategy, began the process of reprofiling our debt. This just means that we are replacing more expensive debt with less expensive debt. Short-term debt with longer-term debt. This is what is happening. And so you saw that last uh, Friday or so, uh, Ghana issued a bond, essentially, to do this reprofiling. And in that context, we raised some 2.5 $2.25 billion of investment that came in to buy this CD denominated bond. There was a CD bond which was um, uh, issued for 15 years tenor, 15 year tenor, and that brought in $2.25 billion. But what is so remarkable about this particular transaction, and I think um, it is, the, for me, the deal of the year so far, we've been able to reprofile our debt get more foreign exchange without increasing our debt stock. For the year, the city has appreciated in value. When we came in, it was running. Uh, essentially, we have arrested it. <laughs>
and, and the IGP has the key. She has locked it up. Uh, we've arrested it. Dr. Bamiya also says the government has allocated more than 450 million CDs towards its flagship one district, one factory project. On the issue of illegal mining activities that have destroyed many of the country's water resources, Dr. Bamiya said issuance of licenses for small-scale mining has been suspended in order to properly regulate the sector and ensure mining is done in a sustainable manner. We we'll bring you more from the Vice President's historic town hall event with Joe News, but to help us interrogate the energy issues is Ben Boache of uh, Energy Think Tank Africa Center for Energy Policy. Thank you for making the time. Now, how much do you know about the review of the power purchase agreements by government, which has brought savings of $300 million? How are consumers benefiting from this review? Uh, I think uh, government only promised to uh, review the uh, agreement. Uh, but we haven't had any details until uh, today. And we would appreciate if some details are given to us, uh, how they came about uh, renegotiating some of those uh, deals. Um, but he was specific on the fuel, uh, which, of course, is just supply uh, contract. So if you were able to negotiate it down, then uh, uh, it's beneficial for the supply of crude to uh, uh, the thermal plant. So I think that is what uh, probably was talking about. But as far as the power contracts are concerned, we don't have any more details on uh, 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 what the negotiations have gone. Uh, so we promised that uh, the ministry was going to look at. All right. He's, Dr. Bami also talked about the cancellation of about 20 of these contracts. It means uh, you wouldn't be aware of these ones either. No, we, we're, not, we're not sure about the details and what uh, clauses they, they were able to activate to, to be able to cancel. Uh, uh, the, the contract. But of course, in any contract, there will be clauses that uh, would allow you to trigger a cancellation, and probably they had uh, 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 some uh, uh, leeway in those contracts to be able to cancel them. And he did also indicate that some of them have been deferred, which means that if they were supposed to come on probably this year or next year, uh, they've been asked to come on two, three years after, which is good, because in the power sector, once you have uh, the, the plant come on stream, you're going to have to pay for capacity charges, whether you you actually utilize it or not. So if you have opportunity to suspend uh, 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 it from coming on stream immediately when you don't need it, uh, it's a plus to ensure that you don't have redundancies that you're going to have to pay for. Now, the vice president also talked about capping new electricity purchases from IPPs at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. I suppose this should reduce the cost of electricity for consumers. When can we expect to feel the benefits of this capping, and what will be the quantum? Do you know? I think the reference was being made to new entrants. Uh, if you sign a contract at 15 cents, 20 cents, you can't just uh, 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 bring it to 10 cents. But he was talking about new agreements, uh, new contracts that will come in. Uh, you can't go beyond uh, 10 cents. Uh, so I think that was the point he was making. And I think it's good uh, to ensure that Ghana is not uh, 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 generating electricity at a higher rate than the subject regional average. And over the years, that's what we have been doing, uh, 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 for which reason the tariff has gone uh, off the roof. And uh, those steps would help you know, uh, ensure that we can generate electricity more cheaply so that the consumer can also have uh, uh, access to cheaper electricity. So it's not something that we can expect to benefit from in the short term? No, I, I think he was making reference to contracts that are going to be signed, CPAs that are going to be signed. And he also made uh, the point that they are not even going to be signing any more uh, thermal PPAs unless it is uh, 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 renewable. Uh, so you cannot benefit from existing contracts unless you are able to renegotiate them, which they said we are going to do. Uh, 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 but you can't automatically cap those ones unless you have been able to renegotiate uh, those contracts. But for new... Uh, uh, agreements that may be entered into, uh, he says they will negotiate beyond uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 per kilowatt hour, which I think is, uh, is good. All right. Now, so how do we reconcile the policy to venture into just renewable energy, as you just indicated, which is relatively more expensive uh, due to the high initial cost and capping the cost of that power at 10 cents per kilowatt hour? Is that feasible at all? 
I don't know what the thinking is, but if the thinking is that we have signed up to so many uh, thermal generations, then we don't need to uh, sign additional ones in the meantime. But we would, uh, we would still allow renewable energy to be incorporated into our energy mix. Uh, that direction is okay, but into the long term, you will still need uh, uh, some thermal complementation, and that when we get to that point, you cannot say that uh, 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 you will sign on to uh, 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 those small plants because you always need a base load. And if you don't have a base load from uh, renewables, then you would have to sign out uh, 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 for new plants. So probably was making reference to uh, uh, the short to medium term where we have signed up to so many thermal plants and therefore we wouldn't need to sign additional ones. But then government intends to uh, allow some uh, a renewable energy uh, complementation. That will be in the right direction. But in the future, we will still need uh, 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 some additional uh, thermal plants. Because, mind you, we have some of our old thermal plants phasing out, and you need to replace them. So without uh, uh, attracting investment or allowing uh, uh, thermal plants to come in, you wouldn't be able to replace uh, uh, those plants that will have to go off the grid. And I think if we get there, we we'll definitely have to sign new uh, contracts. All right, so, but uh, talking about the uh, thermal uh, electricity again, how do we cap the cost of electricity at 10 cents per kilowatt hour when really the cost is usually dependent on the cost of natural gas, diesel, or crude oil, the price of which we have no control? Yeah, that, that, is, that is the intriguing part. And um, I don't know what is informing. Maybe uh, the current dynamics, uh, given the current price trend, uh, that's what he was making reference to. And also, if you bring in a thermal plant for uh, gas, consume gas, you can know fairly how much uh, uh, gas will cost because gas prices are fairly stable uh, uh, over a longer period. For example, Ghana knows how much we're going to pay for our ENI gas over 10, 15 years. Uh, so it helps you to be able to plan uh, 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 how much electricity should cost. And probably that's what they have done. We don't have the full facts. But if you are talking about gas, it's easier to plan based on contracts, gas supply contracts you have signed uh, 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 over a period. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Ben Boachi is with the Africa, the Africa Energy, Africa Center for Energy Policy, ASAP. And then moving on, the government says it has increased funding for the National Health Insurance Scheme by 300 million CDs. Dr. Mamadou Baumia said payment of arrears to hospitals, the scheme uh, also is expected to begin next week. He was responding to a question about low government funding for the health sector at the 100 days town hall meeting on Monday. Can you please tell Ghanaians your plans you have to help the health system because the health system in Ghana is now in a transition. As you have already moved from transition, but the health sector is still in transition. What are the plans you have to transform the health system now, more especially mental health, national health insurance, non-communicable diseases, and expanded program on immunization? Thank you. Thank you very much. And just before you do the answering, just want to add to that a bit more specific on the national health insurance scheme. In the manifesto, you promise to increase funding for it. Uh, it. It's not part of the 103 achievements you put out there. Should I assume then that you haven't achieved that yet? Thank you very much. I think in that case I should make it 104. <laughs> <laughs> Because we, we have increased funding to the National Health Insurance under the budget. We have 300 million Ghana CDs more this, this year in the budget for National Health Insurance. So I think that in the area of health, uh, we are looking very seriously at making sure that the National Health Insurance Scheme can be sustained, uh, to provide more funding for it. We are beginning next week with payment of arrears. There have been arrears since March 2016 or so in the National Health Insurance. And, and, and a lot of service providers are in trouble and if you don't settle these areas, you have problems in, in the system. And so we have allocated funds in the budget to settle these areas, and we are starting next week. 
Former chief executive of the Ghana Chamber of Mines, Joyce Aye, says government must consider the exploitation of lesser known mineral resources, explaining that could bring the country good fortunes. She said Ghana was too reliant on gold mining while neglecting equally valuable minerals that could improve the livelihood of citizens. At the town hall meeting on the government's 100 days in office, Madam Joyce Aye urged government to encourage mining of these resources. I'd like to posit that Ghana, though awash with gold, has other minerals that lend themselves more readily into development. So we really need to move away from just focus on gold mining to go into the other lesser known minerals, one of which is kaolin, and then you have feldspar and so on, so that we can promote Ghanaians in mining, even shell banks in some of the coastal areas, you know, Adodi. They, they grow and they form shell banks which can be used in the cement factory and so on. So, um, Your Excellency, I think a positive attitude towards Ghanaians in mining, focusing on not gold, but other minerals that would actually aid our development would be the way to go. Thank you very much. Thank you, I, and I share those views. I, I mean, the, as a country, a lot of the times we forget how much we really have in terms of resources, and you are just pointing that out again, and I think it is definitely important, because some of these minerals are in very, very high demand, uh, much higher priced per ton than gold, and we should, we should look at them. Watch and join News Prime. We're taking a break, but when we come back, we'll bring you reactions from the town hall event with Dr. Alaji Mamadou Bound Institute. Right, so for most of the audience who graced the town hall meeting on Monday, they were impressed with the vice president's delivery. He explained Dr. Mamadou Bamia's responses to questions show that the government is familiar with issues and would solve them. We also commended the multimedia group for the initiative. It's, it's a very good program. Uh, the vice president, uh, um, you know, discharged uh, uh, the duties very well. He spoke very well. He, an he answered the questions very well. Um, he was very clear. He left no doubt in anybody's mind that, uh, yeah, they are committed to what they promised the people of Ghana. Very, very impressed. And um, what he shared, the 103 achievements were very commendable. So we encourage them to do more. Actually, for me, I think the vice president has really done well. I think for the first time, this is a time uh, we have come to a time where a vice president has made the masses to discuss about the economic issues. For that matter, I think he has really done well. Uh, the vice president did very well, touching on key critical economic issue. And I was also very happy to know that um, within 100 days, we have about 8 billion as uh, our foreign uh, reserve, and that was very um, impressive. The platform has been a laudable one, and I think the multimedia group of companies must be commended for this. I mean, it's a great opportunity to interact, you know, with the presidency for them to, you know, outline what they are going to do for us, and you know, and also you, um, this can be seen as a self-evaluatory exercise in terms of where they came from, what they came to meet, and what they are aspiring to do, and in a way. I mean, you can see this as, let's say, a SWOT analysis. Now, when asked about the pronouncements of some governing party officials regarding the activities of pro-MPP vigilante groups, Vice President Dr. Baumia suggested the law must be applied rather than a personalization of the issue. But some members of the public who watched the event from Kumasi did not find his answer satisfactory. Of course, I mean, there's something like somebody who has To be honest with you, 100 days in the office is too short a time to do proper assessment. Just that it gives you indication of what is to come. So I would say that um, so far, so good, the foundation has been laid. If you look at the kind of ministers, the kind of economic team that has been put together, 
from the beginning. You could see that yet it inspires confidence. The budget was read, and the budget uh, give hope to businesses, which I said is business friendly. My only concern in the hundred days, probably everybody's concern, has been the security situation in the country, particularly in the Ashanti region. Over the past few months, of uh, about three weeks now all the things that have been going on. I think the president has to put his feet down and make sure that everybody who is supposed to be responsible for security in the region is held responsible. Others were however hopeful the promises will be fulfilled. They also raised issues such as other microfinance companies that have gone under with depositors' funds. They spoke with Love Affirms Rasso Sassara Donko after the live town hall event. Of course, I mean, there's something like somebody who has set his questions, write his exams, and then he's marking his own scripts. And of course, you can also see that it's an extension of the state of the nation's address and many of the things that they have put in their manifesto. I mean, he also talked about the Galamsey menace and the things that he needs to do. In fact, what really touched my heart was the bringing back of allowances for teachers, allowances for nurses, and for the fact that they have already trained 1,400 teachers in the area of ICT. Now, if I had the opportunity, I would have asked him, what, what, what is the brain behind certain three development funds? He talked about the Northern Development Fund, a development fund for the middle belt, and then also one for the coastal area. I mean, what is the thinking behind that? Now, beyond just establishing the fund, what are the specifics? Because we have seen many of such development funds. I mean, the simple one that everybody can remember is the SADA. It came and just fizzled into thin air. Nobody saw actually what SADA came to achieve. So if I had the opportunity, I would have asked him, what will go into the specifics, especially in the Northern Development Fund? Based on Radio papers, they always talk about just a motor, just a motor, DKM, DKM. But there is one thing that we are forgetting. We are here when um, Noble Dream did the same thing to us. We haven't heard anything. But during campaign time, our politicians go out there and say DKM, just a motor. What about, I mean, Noble Dream? My money is with Noble Dream, and we are not hearing anything. So to me, I think it is time when mentioning the name of just a motor, DKM, um, Noble Dream needs to be mentioned too. I was expecting the Vice President, he said, Silent, to lay more emphasis on the unemployment rate in the system. Because we know in the system there's a lot of graduates who are in their house looking for jobs. So I was expecting the President to lay more emphasis on what they are going to do about the unemployment rate in the system. Right, so we'll quickly go on to Facebook to get some reaction the, on the Vice President 100 Days uh, Town Hall event. And we're getting it from the former Deputy Minister of Information, Felix Kwachofosu's Facebook page. Uh, there's not been exactly a reaction from the National Democratic Congress, but uh, uh, this poster on uh, Felix Kwachofosu's page says, Deception Galore. It talks about 100 Days of deception by the Kufado government and it talks about unfulfilled promises and uh, some of the promises as indicated or unfulfilled promises as indicated energy sector levy uh, ESLA not removed fuel prices keep increasing no reduction of electricity and water tires contrary to promises made no full restoration and payment of nursing and teacher trainee allowances no payment for DKM, God is love, and other microfinance victims. No provision of jobs for the teeming unemployed youth of Ghana. No instantly free SHS education for all JHS graduates. Only 467,692 out of the 1.6 million SHS students will benefit. And then no once a day feeding for all st day students, as promised at Okwapman Senior High School. And massive borrowing of 1.5 billion US dollars after declaring that the new government would not borrow. And we have had some reactions to that particular uh, issue of borrowing uh, by the vice president. And then he also talks about reign of terror with tacit support of President Tekufuado and the security apparatus. It says, Tagri and hooliganism from pseudo-terrorist groups, invincible forces and Delta force uncontrolled by multiple government security appointees. And it goes on and on and on. And it's all available on the Facebook page of, uh, of Felix Quacho for she's a deputy, uh, former deputy communications minister.
Now, in other news, away from the 100 days, he was once a laborer who is now a teacher. The inability of his parents to finance his second cycle education forced him to take up menial jobs. The turning point of his life was when he was engaged to weed a client's compound. Mahmoud Mohamed Rudin tells a story of 28-year-old Kofi Apia from the Ashanti region. Kofi appeared to have won the confidence and trust of many people he worked for as a laborer. For him, the little money he made from his work was not only for survival. Growing up at Jobin, the 28-year-old man always looked into the future with determination and hope. I was determined from infancy that whatever be the case, um, I will continue with the SHS. I didn't have hope though that I told myself that I will go to school. Kofi says while struggling through the period of his development, he was determined to return to school to the highest level. I met a certain man who was farming around Jabin, Jabin to um, Yankumakrum. So I heard that there was a certain woman there who has a vast land of land and she was farming there. In fact, she, she gave that land to a certain man called Mr. Ade. So that man contacted people to weed on the farm so that he would pay them. So when I completed school and there was no hope for me, and because I can weed and weed better, I told a friend that I want to join them. So I also found myself in that area. In 2004, a contract that would transform his life came knocking. Kofi says it was a miracle he least anticipated. Whilst I was reading, she just stood there looking at me, ah, my brother. I was wondering, ah, why is this old woman looking at me like that? But I didn't mind her, I continued with my reading. So when I finished reading, this woman called me. That is Mrs. Jackson's mother. And then she asked me, why didn't you go to school? And I told her, Nana, please, <laughs> my story, you want me to be sad this afternoon. I have completed GHS and I don't have money to continue my education. She said, I'll help you. And I said, thank you, God. At long last, I have somebody who is going to help me. Not knowing that she was my God sent. She was my Jesus Christ. She was coming to change my life. Theodosia Jackson is an educationist and renowned counselor with over 40 years experience. She says her desire to transform people's lives stems from the fact that she went through difficult times herself to reach the top. Looking at my background, when people go through senior high school, they take just about four years to become graduates. But I had taken more than 20 years to attain that same level. So because of that, God had used to prepare me to have sympathy for others. So because of that, for more than 40 years now, if I come across somebody who desires to better himself academically and has financial challenges, I quickly go in to help that person. Life, it is said, is not necessarily a straight line. One can break from the shackles of hopelessness, depending on focus, determination, and resilience. Mrs. Jackson's foundation supports hundreds of needy students annually. Kofi's story is one of many told by beneficiaries, mostly from poor financial background. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin reporting. We're taking a break, we'll bring you business Now, hundreds of families Easter Monday spend quality time together at the Love Firm family party in the park in Kumasi. The event, which is designed to encourage family outing and bonding, was well attended with parents and children participating in various fun games. Love Firm's Erasto Sarodonko was there for joining news. The Love Firm family party in a park is a concept created to bring families together. It is expected that we gather around, bring the children around, we create 
a fun park, sort of, for families to bond together. Let me try and speak with some of the lovely kitty bobs uh, who have gathered in here. And I see this wonderful chap. What is your name? My name is Asayefiye. Wow, wonderful. What's the name of your school? My school. Then today. Wow, okay, so go and have fun, okay? All right, and what's your name? I hear you come from Pong. Come from Pong. What's the name of your school? Ken West. Ken West. So how old are you? Seven years old. Are you having fun here? Yes. Hey, what did you do? I, I was doing face painting. Uh-huh. So you're now going to paint your face? Yes. What's your name? Zita Nyakwapo. Zita, what are you doing here? Um, I, I have come here to have fun. To have fun? And are you having fun? Yes. So, let me try and speak with the parents on what they are getting in from here. Uh, so I have some uh, moms here. Mommy, mommy, what's your name? My name is Diana Derry. Oh, okay. And what's your name? Christiana Derizu. Oh, okay. So how many children did you bring here today? You, uh, yeah. Two children. Two children? Uh, are they having fun? Yeah, that's one here. That's He's okay. having fun, yeah. He just came people. out from the bouncy castle. Uh, this event, we are happy that we meet some children playing, going up and down. With music for the uh, people be, uh, dancing all along. Uh, so we are, we are really uh, happy uh, oh, okay. for coming here. Uh, <laughs> so what is it giving you? What is it giving you as a parent? Oh, it's fine. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's good you should bring the children out to also socialize with other children. Daddy here is also waiting for his turn, are you? Oh, actually, we're waiting for one of my the kids. Uh, okay. Uh, she's on the train now. So what's the experience like? What's the experience like? Experience like uh, the party in the yeah, park? the party in the park. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I want to say that the party is so nice. So nice, eh? Yes. Hey, why is it nice? Because... Many people are enjoying here, so I can say that it's so nice. I want us to do it again. All right, so thank you very much for watching. My name is Israel Aya, but following right after this, uh, this is an abridged version of the bulletin. It's one hour instead of the usual two hours. But right after this, we're bringing you a playback mm -hmm. of the town hall <laughs> event with Dr. Uh, uh, Mao Duval, Mia, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. So stay tuned for that. Is Joy News Prime.